Hey guys, today I am inside to wrap up the Bout of Books 14 readathon. So basically, I'm going to tell you what I read last week. If you saw my TBR video, I had quite a few books on my pile and I was being really, really ambitious. I normally read about a book a week, um, so I knew getting through like seven books or something was going to be quite out of the picture, but I wasn't actually aware how much I had going on last week and it felt like the world was conspiring against me to stop me from reading. Regardless of that, I'm really satisfied with what I did accomplish last week because I feel like I really enjoyed all of these things and now let's talk about them. To start off the readathon, I had about 120 pages left of Fudoki by Keech Johnson, so this is what I obviously started with. Fudoki is the tale of the aging imperial Princess Haruene as she sorts through all of her belongings in preparation to go into seclusion in a monastery um, to live out the remaining days of her life. As Haruene and her attendants sort through her belongings and especially focus on getting rid of older writing from when she was a young woman, Haruene also sits down in the evening and writes out the tale of the Fudoki, or the tale of this young cat girl who becomes a human woman and is sent out to seek her place when everything that she knows has been destroyed. My library classifies this as science fiction or fantasy, but I would almost call this a cultural history of what it means to be an upper-class woman in Heian-era Japan. While the main action in Fudoki is the tale of the cat girl, or Kagaya Hime as she becomes known, particularly her journey where she encounters noble women, fights in a war, and basically struggles to find her place in the wider world. You also get a lot of Haruemei's life um, as she you know, doesn't just write the story, but she actually reflects on her own experiences, her familial relationships, and especially her relationship with a past lover named Dome. Ultimately though, to me, what was so interesting about this is that as Haruemei is writing the story of the Catwoman warrior, it becomes more of a vehicle for her to explore all of the things she wishes she could do, but that she actually has never experienced and never will experience because she is not just a woman, but she is a woman of high rank. This is honestly one of the most underrated books on Goodreads. I believe it only has 400 ratings, but it's fantastic. And I think that it does something that a lot of books with multiple narratives don't do well in that both storylines are equally compelling and equally engaging. When you're reading about Kage Kagaya Hime as she goes off on her adventures, you're not thinking, oh, this is so much better than Haruemei's portion, because when you read about Haruemei's life, you're equally sucked in because it's just so interesting and so insightful on what court like was like back in medieval Japan. I just happened to find out about this book because I was creepily going through all of Mercedes' backlog of videos, and she did a book review on this last year. So now I'm passing it on. I'm telling all of you guys, please Please go read this. It's absolutely fantastic. If you're interested in fantasy, in mythology, in Japanese culture or history, or if you're interested in the role of women throughout history, definitely check this out. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if you want to see more articulate thoughts of mine, um, I did review on my blog, so I will link that in the description. Oh, and I should mention I gave this one four stars. So Fudoki left such a strong impression on me, I actually waited a little while to pick up my next book, but when I did pick up another book, it was To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. As I mentioned in my TBR video, this was a book that I somehow managed to avoid despite going up through the American school system um, up through a lit degree in undergrad, so I'm glad that I rectified that. I feel like um, I'm gl I, when I picked this up, I thought, okay, I need to read this because this is one of those books that you need to read, but now that I've read it, I'm glad that I read it for the message contained inside. I'm not going to talk about the plot because I'm pretty sure everybody knows what this is about, and if you don't, I will put the Goodreads link down below, but I enjoyed this for the most part. I think there were several passages that really stuck out to me. It's just very beautifully written and very poignant and very... Um, important to at least be thinking about. It also freaked me out how relevant this still is in American society today, especially regarding the racial tension and series of police-involved shootings over the past year or so. Um, it was just weird how perfectly it all tied in, and maybe we should all go back and reread this and do some thinking. Of course, I don't think it's possible to have a perfect novel, so there were a few things that I didn't like about To Kill a Mockingbird. The first being the first 130, 150 pages or so. I understand why that part of the plot was in here. It's the setup point. It's supposed to be a coming of age story, so we're not going to see the growth and development if you don't first introduce us to the child while well, they're immature and learning and yada yada yada. Quite frankly, I did not care, and if I was not the kind of reader that 
gives a book about 200 pages before I DNF it, um, I probably would not have finished this book. I just found them tedious and because I was already pretty aware of what was going to happen, I was like, get to the court case already. And maybe that was just the former law student in me, but I was like, come on, that's that's all I really wanna know about. And the other thing I did not like about this novel, which I was really surprised, was Atticus Finch. I did not like Atticus at all, um, which was surprising to me because so many people talk about Atticus as this like, important noble figure in the history of literature and quite frankly I found him completely unrealistic. To Kill a Mockingbird is chock full of realistically flawed characters so to have someone like Atticus who is so um, steadfast in his beliefs, who seems so perfect and is so moral all of the time, to me that just felt so unrealistic and it actually felt like it it was making the tale a little bit preachy and a little bit too moralistic for me um, in some instances. And although I know that the point of this book is to kind of discuss how we should treat other people, especially people who maybe are different from us, um, I don't know, that just diminished the book for me. Ultimately though, I am very glad that I read this. I feel like I filled in a big hole in my American literature knowledge and I ended up giving this one four stars. Also, do you like my edition? This is the copy that my brother read when he was in eighth grade, so all the decorations on here are his, obviously, because my name's not Trevor. To Kill a Mockingbird was actually the only full text that I managed to read during the readathon, but I did actually pick up one more thing, and that was Teach Us to Outgrow Our Madness by Kenzaburo Oye. Now, this is actually a collection of novellas. I know I've been saying it's a collection of short stories, and that is wrong. Sorry. I read one of these stories when I was in high school, and I forgot how weird Oya's writing is. He does a lot of experimental stuff with form and a lot of experimental stuff with narrative style. And so this actually probably was a really bad choice for a readathon because it takes a lot more brain power than you would think. Um, I will continue reading this though. I got about 55 or so pages through the first novella, which is called The Day He Himself Shall Wipe My Tears Away. But I am actually really enjoying it so far. It's very creepy. Um, but a lot of these stories have to do with kind of the feeling of young men after World War II. So it's very interesting and kind of life in the aftermath um, and you know, trying to be normal again, what that means. If you're interested in reading Oye or you pick this collection up in particular, I would highly suggest that you read the introduction because I'm not an expert in, you know, Kenzaburo Oye. I'm not an expert in post-World War II Japan. So it gave a lot of very helpful explanatory information and a lot of biographical information. And overall, I think it really enhanced my ability to digest the novellas. So this is all I managed to read for Bout of Books 14 readathon and obviously this isn't as good as I hoped I would do but I really enjoyed what I did get to read and I think that's really all that matters. I also participated in some of the photo challenges so if you follow me on Instagram you probably saw those and if you don't I will link a progress report I did on my blog down in the description and you can go check those out. All right you guys that's actually all I have for this video today so I hope you enjoyed it. If you participated in Bout of Books please let me know how you did this time around. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. Because, because Fudoki left such a note, because, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, don't, I will put the goodly, put the goodly, good, oh. Everybody knows what his.